back to Action News on KGDY. I'm Dirk Hardthrottle. And I'm Kelly Sunbeam. Our top story today, the sad news of the passing of Dr. Gizmo. The oldest member of the Conclave of Justice, Dr. Gizmo's career as a superhero spanned several decades. In a statement from Knight in Mystic Armor, Glory Sword, Dr. Gizmo was killed when the members of the Conclave were confronted with evil doppelgangers of themselves. Said the plate mailed Avenger, quote, The public should be warned that the evil version of Dr. Gizmo is on the loose. We have managed to capture the remaining evil doppelgangers who look and sound exactly the way you're accustomed to your heroes looking and sounding. They do not, as has been speculated, have glowing red eyeballs. Glowing red eyeballs are not a sign of doppelgangerism, unquote. When asked why the remaining Conclave of Justice members were now all suddenly sporting the aforementioned pupil modifications, Glory Sword explained that it was a method the team used to differentiate themselves from their evil counterparts. Talk about your quick thinking. Yet while super fashionistas Cobalt Star and Harmonia were looking resplendent in their new red eyes, the mood at the Conclave was somber to mark the passing of this great woman, Dr. Gizmo. Four years ago, I was fortunate enough to sit down with Dr. Gizmo after the defeat of one of the Conclave's most insidious foes, Professor Amoeba. Some of our listeners may find the details of this years-old interview to be extremely enlightening. You wouldn't believe what we found in his lair. Plans for energy disruptors, geothermic destabilizers, and dozens of other devices that could bring about the end of our world. I have to wonder what kind of sick mind dreams these things up. He even had a cloning tank that could make a perfect copy of anyone. The only way you could tell them apart was that the clones had glowing red... We interrupt this broadcast for some breaking news. Really? Afraid so, Dirk. Our own Sam Sterling has been kidnapped. No. Wait. Sam Sterling? That's right, Dirk. Not Sally Simpson. Well, that's... Can I get a confirmation here, please? If reports are true, this will be only the second time our intrepid field reporter Sam Sterling has been kidnapped. Whereas Sally Simpson is the current world record holder for most criminal abductions. Kelly, Dirk, are you there? Sally, are you all right? I'm fine, Dirk, and the report is true. Sam Sterling has been kidnapped. Oh, no! I'm afraid so, Kelly. And the shocking news doesn't stop there. Mr. Theme Music has also been taken captive. Good heavens! Tell us more, Sally. How did you happen to witness this? Approximately 20 minutes ago, Sam Sterling and I were attending Mayor Malone's press conference in which a number of unimportant and trivial matters of local government were being discussed. Suddenly, the south wall of the building collapsed inwards, waking up most of the press corps. As we looked out at the open air beyond the wall, a figure in green was floating approximately 12 feet off the ground. The Emerald Enchanter? The Chartreuse Changeling. The Jade Jester of Jupiter. I'm afraid not. The attacker was none other than that interstellar warrior woman, Strykoria. Good heavens! For listeners who may not be aware, Strykoria is one of the most powerful warriors in the galaxy. She has appeared on Earth several times, always demanding the same thing, that the most powerful of Earth's champions should join her as her space husband. That's it exactly, Dirk. And as always, she had one man in mind to become her space husband. Metrodelphia's own Captain Goody. Now, Sally, you and Captain Goody have had an off-again, on-again relationship over the years. Despite the friction you've experienced with Lady Light Show in the past... Let me stop you right there, Kelly. My relationship with Captain Goody has never been of an on-and-off nature. And as for Lady Light Show, there's absolutely no friction. In fact, I've never even met her. Of all the superheroes in the Metrodelphia community, she is the one I've never been able to spot, despite my years of journalistic training and my keen reporter's senses. Well, very well, but my question was really about Strykoria. How do you think your relationship with Captain Goody will change if she succeeds in making him her space husband? That's a question I prefer not to think about, Kelly. I have very deep feelings for Captain Goody, but I truly don't think I could see myself as a space mistress. 
Not to interrupt, but could you tell us more about the abduction of Sam Sterling, who even now may be in dire, dire peril? Oh, of course, Dirk. By the time Strikoria had knocked down the wall at City Hall, she was already carrying the unconscious form of Mr. Theme Music with her. Apparently, she was using him, trying to locate Captain Goody by the theme music produced whenever he appears. However, she was apparently unable to hear his theme music over the menacing tone she herself was causing Mr. Theme Music to create. Fascinating. Indeed. Strikoria then approached me personally, saying she planned to use me as bait to draw in Captain Goody. It was then that Sam stepped forward, claiming that he was closer to the captain than me, and offering himself as a hostage in my place. What a brave, brave man. Absolutely. Though I should point out that while I appreciated the gesture, I have interviewed Captain Goody many more times than he has. Oh, we know, Sally. Your friendly rivalry with Sam Sterling is something all of our listeners are very familiar with. So where is Sam now? I put in a call to our own Chopper Lee, who managed to follow them. They are currently on the roof of Fredonia Plaza in uptown Metrodelphia. I'm en route to that location myself as we speak. Our thoughts go out to Sam Sterling, one of KGDY's most valued team members in this trying, dangerous moment. Dirk, uh, Kelly, uh, are you hearing this? Am I still transmitting? Sam? Sam Sterling, is that you? Yes, Dirk. Uh, I am currently being held hostage on the roof of... Yes, we know your location, Sam. Oh, well, good. I should also let you know, I am not alone. Yes, we know Mr. Theme Music is with you. Uh, I see. Well, we have been taken captive by none other than... Strikorio. Yes, we are aware. Oh, yeah. Uh, all right, then. It looks like right now you're losing the friendly rivalry between yourself and Sally Simpson. She's managed to scoop you on your own kidnapping. Uh, okay. Uh, Dirk, Kelly, I do have something to tell you that I'm sure you haven't heard yet. I'm standing here with Strikoria herself, and she would like to broadcast a message to Captain Goody across KGDY's airwaves. And if I do not, little man... You shall suffer my wrath. Um, that was her, as you may have gathered. We'll be happy to help. Listeners, KGDY will be broadcasting an exclusive statement from interstellar warrior woman, Strikoria. You won't hear this on any other station. Oh, good. And we'll be back with that exclusive statement right after this. Wait, seriously, you're cutting to commercial right... Nora, is that you? Oh, hi, Angie. I heard about what happened to your house, completely destroyed in a temporal vortex. But you look so calm. Oh, it was hard at first, but with time and patience, we're rebuilding. The insurance check helped quite a bit, too. Wait, your insurance covered a temporal vortex? Of course. I'm insured by Wide State Mutual. In addition to fire, flood, and vehicles thrown through my windows... They've got me covered for almost everything. Gravity spikes? Yep. Shrink rays? Totally covered. Lasers? Lasers, phasers, energy disruptors, disintegration beams, you name it. In fact, they even cover forms of energy weapons that have not yet been invented. So I don't lose any sleep about what some mad scientist is dreaming up. Wow. My family deserves that kind of peace of mind. I'm going to call Wide State Mutual as soon as I get home. Don't forget to ask about coverage for extraterrestrial threats as well. They even offer renter's insurance. I'm glad I ran into you today, Nora. Me too, Angie. Me too. Oh, man. Susie's got tickets to the Bunnies Under Steamrollers concert. I'd sell my soul to see them. That's a pretty bad trade, young man. Who are you, mister? I'm B.L. Zebub, president of Soul Brokers. I can make sure you get a much better deal for your eternal soul. Wait, you mean I can actually sell my soul? You bet. It's completely legal and binding. You don't even have to be 18 years old. And based on the death metal you're listening to, you're not going to be needing your soul anyway. 
Can I really get something better than tickets to the Bunnies Under Steamrollers concert? Of course! Don't let soul shysters give you any less than your soul is worth. Instead of tickets to one concert, how about free tickets to all of their concerts for the rest of your life? Or, even better, you can start your own rock band. I can do that? How do you think Bunnies Under Steamrollers got a record deal? Soul Brokers will put you in touch with the right malevolent entity to meet your needs. We have packages ranging from wealth, superstardom, power and influence, and even wholesale slaughter of the innocents. I don't think that's for me. Not yet, anyway. Not yet. Soul Brokers. We're waiting for you. And now, over to the weather with retired superhero, the Countess of Clouds. Kelly, seriously, I'm still waiting for... Oh, oh, never mind. (sighs) Forgive me. My powers are weak this day. My old nemesis, the Tropic of Capricorn, struck out at me at the first light of dawn. I drove her away, but my powers were sorely taxed. This day shall be cool and overcast with the remnants of this climatic battle. If I can regain my strength by this evening, there shall be a flurry of snowfall. But lo, Jason Salvador of 117 Bluebell Lane, my energies are drained and I cannot summon the strength to give you the two-hour delay you requested. You must finish your history report this night somehow. So let it be! And now, over to Chopper Lee for traffic. Are you kidding me? Thanks, Dirk. Uh, there's a giant spaceship floating over Fredonia Plaza, and it's causing something of a gaper delay in the uptown streets. You might also want to avoid Interstate 73 at the off-ramp to North Avenue. There was a bit of an incident involving Commander Jazzbeats as he tried to intercept the Midnight Strangler. What happened? Well... The Scatmobile lost a wheel, and the Choker got away. Back to you, Dirk. And now, over to Sam Sterling and a special message from Interstellar Battlewoman, Strykoria. Uh, thank you, Dirk. Uh, all right, Miss Strykoria, he- here is my lapel microphone. You just hold it near your mouth and you... I know how to use your primitive technology, little man. Ow! Oh, it's a good thing I was only struck a glancing blow. Uh, that sort of attack by a woman with Strikoria's amazing enhanced strength could easily have crippled a completely normal man like myself. Are you sure that was a glancing blow? Uh, quite sure, Mr. Theme Music. I thought I hit you dead on. No, no, definitely a glancing blow. Very, very glancing. Enough! Be silent. Captain Goody, I know you can hear this broadcast. If you value the life of this reporter and this maker of theme music, you will come to this roof and submit yourself to me. We shall board my ship, and you will be my space husband for all eternity! Wait! I hear him! Captain Goody has come here at last! Wait! You're not Captain Goody. No, No, we're we're not. not. Captain Goody's not here. But we are. We're here to stop you, Strikoria. Team Team Alpha Alpha Strike Strike Force, go! go. Oh my, it's some of the city's newest defenders, Team Alpha Strike Force. They've come to rescue me and Mr. Theme Music. Um, I'm actually not familiar with their powers, so wait! Uh, apparently, Teen Alpha Strike Force is able to transform themselves into animals. The Gold Teen has turned herself into a duck, or possibly a small swan, and she is pecking ineffectually at Strikoria. What about the Blue and Red Teen, Sam? They have not yet joined the fray. They transform themselves into a sloth and a turtle, and appear to be having trouble reaching the battle. I think technically, the Red Teen is a tortoise. Thank you, Mr. Theme Music. Enough of this. Come here. Mm. Dirk, 
Kelly. This is Sally Simpson. I'm here on the ground at the foot of Fredonia Plaza, and I've just seen Teen Alpha Strike Force being physically thrown off the roof. They've transformed back into their human forms and appear to have survived the fall. Teen Alpha Strike Force, can I have a statement? Strikoria is stronger than we expected. But we are not defeated. We must regroup and form a new plan. Teen Alpha, Alpha Strike, Strike Force, go! And they went. Teen Alpha Strike Force has left the scene in a flurry. Their costumes flash in the sun in almost every color of the spectrum. Sally, Sally, are you there? We appear to be having some technical glitches. Let's see if we still have audio from the roof with our own Sam Sterling. I think Captain Goody must be close. Normally my theme music locks into the most powerful superhero in the area. No, I'm I'm quite certain Captain Goody is far, far away from here. Perhaps you're just tired. Oh, okay. That must be it. He had better come soon. My patience is running thin. I hear him. I warn you, worm. This had better be the real Captain Goody. This time. He's coming. I'm almost sure of it. Captain Goody? Wrong again, sister. It looks like somebody got left at the space altar. Lady Lake Cho. That's me, Mr. Theme Music. No intergalactic she-devil is dragging my favorite crime-fighting partner off to Pluto. Pluto? I wouldn't dare go near that sentient dwarf planet. It knows you have downgraded it, and its anger grows. Soon it will come for you all! Hey, thanks for the warning. For now, though, there's only one creep I want to send to the place where no one can hear you scream. Your laser light powers cannot harm my impervious space body. It's all a matter of targeting, sweetie. Ah! Uh, I'm blinded! Hey, me too. Sorry about that. I guess you both missed it when Captain Goody just showed up. What? Oh! Oh, that's right, Strikoria. We really have to stop meeting like this. Captain Goody, where are you? Right behind you. And the Goody strength in my muscles ought to be enough to throw you back into the open door of your spaceship. I just have one thing to say to you first. What? The engagement is off. No! Nice shot. Captain, now I'll just jumpstart her hyperdrive engine with my light energy and... That ought to take care of that. Come on, Mr. Theme Music. Let's get you down below. Thanks so much for the help, Lady Light Show. Any time, old chum. I've got your back with every color of light in the... Spectrum! Spectrum! What just happened? Sally? Captain Goody? What's going on? How did I get here? Oh, my microphone. Dirk, Kelly, can you hear me? You're coming in loud and clear, Sally. I'm standing here with Captain Goody, but I confess I'm not sure what just happened. Interesting. You know what, Sally? I think you might have gotten caught up in one of Lady Light Show's light-bending powers. It can be extremely disorienting. Does that mean you and Lady Light Show rescued Mr. Theme Music and Sam Sterling from Strike Coria? I won't take much credit. It was mostly Lady Light Show. Darn it. Someday I'm going to interview that woman. I look forward to that myself, Sally. Hey, did we leave the reporter on the roof? Oh! How careless of me. I'll just go get him now. Fear not, citizens. Away! Well, it looks like the day is saved once again. Back to you in the studio. We're so glad everything worked out. An update on the situation at the Conclave of Justice. Dr. Gizmo is not, repeat, not dead. 
As it turns out, the body of Dr. Gizmo was that of an evil doppelganger, as were all the members of the Conclave of Justice with glowing red eyes. Gee, who could have possibly predicted that? The real Dr. Gizmo returned to the Conclave's headquarters, defeated all the remaining doppelgangers, freed her imprisoned teammates, and apparently still had time to install green energy solar panels on the roof of the Conclave's headquarters. Well, it just goes to show what an old hand at superheroics can do when she puts her mind to something. We'll have more on this story and a wrap-up of today's events next hour. For now, I'm Kelly Sunbeam. And I'm Dirk Hardthrottle. And remember, if you're not wearing tights, stay Stay out out of of the the fight. fight. Stay tuned for more Metrodelphia. You have been listening to KGDY, Episode 3, performed by the Seat of Our Pants players and written and directed by Dan Wenzel. Music today included Take a Chance and News Theme by Kevin McLeod. Sound effects by www.3sfx.co.uk. Kelly Sunbeam and Teen Alpha Strike Force member were Bree Kuby. Dirk Hardthrottle and Teen Alpha Strike Force member were Richard Tennant. Dr. Gizmo, Nora, and the Countess of Clouds were Liz Music. Strike Horia and Angie were Dana, Bonner, and Dreesen. Chopper Lee and BL Zebub were Andrew Dell. Soul Selling Teen and Teen Alpha Strike Force member were Draven Andreessen. Mr. Theme Music was David Andreessen. Sally Simpson and Lady Light Show were Jill Wenzel, and Captain Goody and his alter ego were Dan Wenzel. Thanks for listening, citizens. Stay tuned for more.